Hi everybody, for today's current affairs discussion, moving to first question, ISRO, our space agency, headquarter Bangalore, Indian Space Research Organization is gearing up for the launch of the Chandrayaan-3 in the mid of 2023. It means this year, in the month of June, our ISRO is going to launch Chandrayaan-3. Last time, Chandrayaan-2 was launched in 2019. Uh, at the time of landing, we all uh, remember that it is uh, of, at the final stage. We got, but uh, we, we lost the communication with Chandrayaan 2. And with the, all the lessons that we learned in these four years to land rovers, all those things through Chandrayaan 3, ISRO is planned to launch a third mission into the moon called Chandrayaan 3. Right, that's okay. Along with that, the lunar polar exploration exploration mission lupex right you can see here lupex stands lunar polar exploration mission is also known as chandrayaan 4 is the robotic lunar mission concept of concept by isro and which other nation that's what my question intended to send a lander as well as lunar rover to the south pole of the moon, south pole of the region of moon by 2024. Simply, this question, in this year, 2023, ISRO is going to launch Chandrayaan-3 mission. That's fine. Chandrayaan-4 also have a plan to launch next year. And we named it as LUPEX mission. LUPEX simply, Lunar Polar Exploration Mission. And we are launching this LUPEX, that is Chandrayaan-4 mission in assistance in cooperation with the other space agency and which country space agency that is that's what my question and when ISRO is going to launch uh, Chandrayaan 4 that is in 2024 you can remember that point also here right now coming to options here simply <coughs> so Chandrayaan 3 we are going to launch this year Chandrayaan 4 we are going to launch next year uh, along with India the one more nation also participating in the Chandrayaan 4 with assistance from that nation, we are we are launching Lupex mission to the south pole of a moon. Which particular country that is? It is Japan. Option C is the correct answer for this question. And the space agency, that's the chance for Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. And I given in options all like uh, developed and uh, developed countries and their space agencies point of view: USA, NASA, Russia, Roscosmos, China. China National Space Administration and whereas France, the National Center for Space Studies point of view, right? So, simply Chandrayaan 3, we are going to launch indigenously, independently, without taking any support from the other countries. Whereas Chandrayaan 4, uh, we are going to launch next year, 2024, India along with the support from which other country? Japan, and that is JAXA, is their space agency. The same role. Here in India, ISRO is playing the same role JAXA will play uh, with respect to Japan space industry point of view. What stands for JAXA? Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. So option C is the correct answer for this question, right? Move to the next question. <coughs> See. This is also a, some interesting kind of thing. For the first time ever, vote from home option is being given to the people aged above how many years and people with disabilities and regarding that as many as 80,000 plus senior citizens and 19,279 people with disabilities are going to vote from their homes in the upcoming Karnataka elections okay as we all know uh, every day newspapers and new channels we are observing now uh, election campaigns in Karnataka state because the state having uh, assembly elections uh, regarding that state elections point of view, Election Commission of India taken a decision for a certain age group people, so those who are not in a position to <clears throat> approach polling booths, they can cast their vote from their homes itself along with uh, that age, age category people along with a person with a disabilities also can utilize this option. This is the first time ever in Indian election history and which age group people are allowed to vote from their house only, from their homes only. If you look at the options here, A, B, C, D, E, C, 
60, 45, 18, 80 and 100 years plus uh, age group people and correct answer here it is 80 years. Option D is the correct answer for this question, right? So simply, we can call those guys are super senior citizens. Normally, greater than or equal to 60 years, senior citizens and above 80, super senior citizens. Simply, persons with a disability as well as super senior citizens whose age above 80 can cast their vote from home itself in the upcoming Karnataka state elections. This is the first time ever uh, in our Indian election history, Election Commission of India, Election Commission of India is allowing to cast people from their convenient, uh, for their convenient way from their homes itself. So option D is the correct answer for this question. Right, move to the next question. Question number And here itself, you can observe the question number three also. Gross NPA ratio. So this is a news today in, in this is a news in today newspaper. Read once. Gross NPA ratio for SCBs, stands for Scheduled Commercial Banks, was not 4.41 percentage at end of the December 2022, down from 5.8 percentage as on March 31st 2022 and 7.3 percent on March 31st 2021. Right. Simply, this is a statement given by the, this is a statement said by the, our RBI governor, Shakti Kanta Das, uh, while, while, while saying the financial status of Indian banking system for scheduled commercial banks, he quoted that Indian scheduled commercial banks are doing, doing in a very well manner. If you look at two years back, that is in 2021 March, gross NPS of a bank at 7.3 percentage, whereas one year back, that is March 31st, 2022, grass NPS at 5.8 percentage. And as of December 2022, grass NPS came down to 4.41 percentage. It means simply the graph of grass NPS in India. It is in a descending order. Okay, right. So simply grass NPS, if you consider in a y-axis, year-wise, 2021, 2022 and 2022 December data, okay, this is 21 March, this is 22 March, whereas 20 December point of view, in 21, let us assume almost 7 point, certain number, 4 point percentage, whereas in March 2022, it came down to around 5 plus percentage, and now it is further comes down to 4 point some, 4 percentage change. So simply, schedule commercial banks point of, schedule commercial banks point of view, NPA, gross NPA ratio is coming down. That's a good indication, good sign. But from this discussion, what we all need to learn, what is actually gross NPA? How the gross NPA ratio will be calculated? That's the point we have to focus here. See, gross GNPA stands for gross non-performing assets. This one stands for gross non-performing assets. Now, GNPA is an absolute amount. It tells you the total value of gross non-performing assets for the bank in a particular quarter maybe or in a year as the case may be, right? So, first let's we understand what actually GNPA, gross NPA, then I will go with the gross NPA ratio, right? Take an example. Let me take an example. There is a bank, SBI, State Bank of India, and let us assume it offers loans to four people. A, B, C, D, taken loans from SPA, each certain number, A, 1 crore rupees, B, 1 crore, C, 10 crores, D, like around 50 crore rupees, they taken loan, they taken loans from State Bank of India, right. So, these guys are borrowers and SBA is a lender, right. Now, we need to understand what is NPA first, what is gross NPA, all those things, let me discuss. Among these four borrowers, let us assume, a, B, C are paying their loan EMIs on time. EMI means equated monthly installment. So if you take a loan, if it is a term loan, every month on a due date, borrower has to pay EMI amount, right? Let us assume these guys A, B, C, D are paying their EMIs on time to the lender called State Bank of India. Now, from these Three lenders point of view. For these three lenders point of view, SBA no need to bother because these borrowers are generating income regularly. So State Bank of India will call these three borrowers are 
standard assets standard assets what is standard asset definition first of all borrowers are assets any borrower who taken loans and repaying their loan emis on time and that borrowers will be identified in a banking terminology called standard assets an asset which is generating regular income to the lenders nothing but banks nothing but standard assets in our example let us assume this borrower d is failing to repay is defaulted defaulted is failed to repay their loan emis for more than three months continuously three months okay if any borrower who failed to generate any form of interest to the lender to the bank for continuously three months it means if this d stops paying off um <clears throat> emis continuously three months and that particular borrower point of view outstanding amount outstanding means the loan amount which is to to be repaid by the borrower to the bank nothing but outstanding amount that outstanding amount considered as the npa non performing asset so what is npa an asset which failed to generate any form of income within 3 months time within 90 days time to the lender to the bank nothing but non performing asset right in our example this d is not paying their emis let us assume So A, B, C, these guys are standard assets, whereas D defaulted. So that's why this guy will be identified by the bank as NPA, non-performing asset. Imagine he taken a loan of 50 crores. On that, he paid 10 crores already. And now he has to pay remaining amount. This is the outstanding balance. He has to pay 40 crore. And now he is or that company is struggling to repay loan amount. Then at that scenario, this 40 crore amount is nothing but non-performing asset. In this manner, total, how many borrowers are defaulted to the bank without paying loans, without paying loan EMIs? And those all borrowers, addition is nothing but gross non performing asset. Let us assume one, one more borrower, F, who is also acting like a NPA, non performing asset, has to pay an amount of 20 crore rupees, outstanding balance. Let us assume one more guy, G, taken a loan of 1 crore and he also now acting as NPA for a bank. Then in this scenario, okay, ABC or standard assets. With respect to ABC, bank no need to bother because they are paying their EMIs on time. But D defaulted, E defaulted, and this guy F and G, these guys also defaulted in the sense the sum of all this money. So D point of view 40 crores, E point of view 20 crores, F let me take F point of view 1 crore. The sum of this all three borrowers outstanding balance is nothing but total NPA that is called gross and PA, gross non-performing assets. Hope you understood the concept of gross NPA. Sum of all the NPA's money, uh, outstanding of all the NPA's money is nothing but gross NPA, right? So now what is gross NPA ratio? If you look at here, gross NPA ratio is the ratio of the total gross NPA of the to total gross NPA of the total advances. In our example, A, B, C, D, I taken even up to F, F, up to F, right? A, B, C or standard assets. A amount take 1 crore. B amount take 10 crores. C amount take 5 crores. D, 50 crores. E, 10 crores. F, let us assume 2 crores. These are the loans offered by the banks to different, different people. These guys, outstanding imagine all these figures are outstanding balances now outstanding balances what is outstanding balance the loan amount which is yet to be repaid right now what is gross npa ratio gross npa ratio nothing but gross npa divided by total advances what is gross npa ratio if you want to express in terms of percentage multiply with 100 gross npa ratio is nothing but Gross NPA divided by total advances. Here, let us assume this D, E, F, or gross NPA uh, or NPS. It means in this example, 50 plus 10 plus 2, that is 62 crores numerator. Total advances, how much? 
these guys also will be included these guys also it means 1 plus 10 plus 5 that is 16 plus 62 it's almost 78 crores in this example 62 by 78 for easy calculation let us assume this is 60 this is 80 in this example 6 by 8 3 by 4 it means 75 percent of loans are cross NPS I mean loans are NPS cross NPA ratio it simply indicates that out of total advances how much percent of loans are turned into NPS okay if this ratio is very low the bank financial position is very healthy in our example it is 75 percentage if this is the real scenario if this is the real case then banking system will collapse see in our example cross NPA ratio two years back in March 2021 it is 7.3% right in our example it, it I, I calculated around 75 percentage where is 7.3 percent where is 75 percentage just for calculation purpose I taken that much figures uh, but generally cross NPA ratio should be as low as possible in March 2021 gross NPA ratio 7.3 of all the commercial banks in India scheduled commercial banks whereas that number comes down to in 2022 March it's 5.8 percentage and happy thing year on year the gross NPA ratio is in a descending order that is this is the number as of December 2022 4.41 percentage simply I hope you understood you understood the concept of gross NPA and gross NPA ratio out of the total loans given by the bank what portion of loans what percent of loans are stopped generating any kind of income to the bank the loans which are identified as NPA the sum of all the loans which are identified as NPA is nothing but gross NPA now if you want to express gross NPA ratio numerator that sum of gross NPAs divided by total advances which includes standard assets also understood right yeah and one point I want to convey from this discussion banks should maintain must maintain their gross NPA as low as possible that indicates that maximum of their loans are standard assets when if gross NPA ratio is very little bit a percentage right thank you that's all about this third question moving to the next question question number four yeah this is this is the thing about um link to the self-help groups in our local terminology Dwakra groups SSGs self-help groups so let's see what are the points that we need to remember regarding this discussion identify the correct statements about DAY and RLM here DAY stands Deen Dayal Antyoday Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission this DAY NRLM now this the responsibility of DAY NRLM is to promote SSGs, self-help groups. Few points about DIY NRLM, few points about SSG. I given here. Let's see. Right. Statement option A. The Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India, launched the NRLM mission, that is National Rural Livelihood Mission. Exams point of view, the abbreviation is also important. NRLM stands for National Rural livelihood mission uh, by restructuring Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarajgar Yojana with effect from 1st April 2013 it means during that time if it is a date on this day Manmohan Singh is the Prime Minister Modi came in 2014 May in 2013 1st April in the Congress government itself up to that time there is a scheme called Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarajgar Yojana this SGS point was renamed as NRLM under the ministry called Rural Development. What stands for NRLM? National Rural Livelihood Mission. Right. Next. The point B. After Modi government, after Modi government came into the existence, NRLM was renamed as C. DAY NRLM. DAY NRLM. That is Deen Dayal Antyoday Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission with effect from this date onward March 29 2016 onward okay in, in the first tenure of Modi government 
simply first varna jayanti gram saroj swarojgar yojana was renamed as replaced with the nrlm and after modi government in 2016 nrlm renamed as tay nrlm what is tay din dayal antyodaya yojana national rural livelihood mission now see with the what objective what is the purpose of day nrlm you can observe in option c the day nrlm is the flagship program of government of india for what purpose for promoting poverty reduction since independence these words we are we are hearing many times but still it exists promoting poverty reduction through building strong institutions of the poor particularly women and enabling these institutions to access a range of financial services and livelihoods so simply unbanked and underbanked areas the people who are living in these areas unbanked underbanked areas especially focus on women provide to provide financial services to them like a banking services and if people provided with the banking services they will get a loans and that money they will utilize for the uh, their development of their living standards and their, they, they will utilize that money for the generation of income for their livelihood and it may remove poverty that's the major objective of this day nrlm to, to promote uh, especially to give support for the providing financial services to the rural women who are living in rural areas okay right now that's all about point c especially with an objective to remove poverty right let's see point d what it is saying day nrlm that is deen dayal and let me write deen dayal antyodaya yojana okay deen dayal antyodaya yojana national rural livelihood mission promotes women self help groups however only in case of groups to be formed with the persons with the disabilities and other special categories like elders and transgenders you can see generally we may heard dwakra groups whenever whenever we heard like a shg self help groups dwakra groups we may think like it is for only females right but shg will be allowed both the male as well as female in this scenario what is that scenario this is the condition see the condition however only in case of groups to be formed with persons with the disabilities and other special categories like elders old age people and transgenders you can see tay nrlm may be may have both men and women in these self help groups normally self help groups for women right but um this tay nrlm promoting self help groups allows SGs for both the men and women combinedly, but a condition elder age people and if there will be any persons with the disabilities and including even transgenders also. Clear, right? Yeah. And one more point here option E you can see women self help groups under Hindayal Antyoday Yojana NRLM consist of if if you face if you if you, if you see any time the question with respect to SG. What do you, how many members can form self help group in examination minimum number of people maximum number of people normally the minimum 10 maximum 20 but there is an exception in case of special shgs that is groups in the difficult areas groups with a disabled persons and groups formed in remote tribal areas this number may be minimum five people also five members also it means in tribal areas rural areas and very backward areas where the population is very less and person with the disabilities in that scenario SHG will be allowed to establish with a minimum five number of people also that's the point you should remember but in general in a self help group minimum number of people 10 maximum 20 and exception this is the scenario right and now a, a few more points about SHG this self help group concept uh, introduced in 1992 on the recommendation basis of this guy SK Kalia committee which committee recommendation basis self help groups were introduced on the recommendation basis of SK Kolya committee in 1992 under the guidelines of NABARD 
and it was linked with the banking system SRG BLP. What is SRG BLP? You can see here self help groups. This one self help group bank linkage program. You can see the abbreviation also here bank linkage program. So, as per this question point of view, all the statements are true only. What we learned here, what we discussed here. So, Congress government in 2013 itself, Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarojgar Yojana scheme was renamed as NRLM, National Rural Livelihood Mission. And 2016, that particular NRLM was renamed as DAY NRLM. What is DAY NRLM? Dean Dayal Antyode Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission. And what is the purpose of this DAY NRLM? It promotes uh, self help groups in rural areas uh, and now I discussed a few points about self help groups. It promotes self help groups in rural areas uh, through banking system they are going to provide financial services to the unbanked and un underbanked areas financial services to the people. Uh, <coughs> next thing about SHG self help groups point of view 1992 on the recommendation basis of SK Kalia committee SSGs were introduced. SSG minimum number of people 10, maximum 20. Exceptions if persons with the disabilities and tribal areas, uh, uh, areas which are very less population in that scenario's point of view, person with the disabilities, there SSG can be started with a five people also. Okay, that, that's all about this particular statement. And the point. Going to next question. Um, Question number five here simply. This is not actually a question that I given as a statement. Recently, um, with respect to LRS, liberalized rent-in scheme point of view, if any Indian residents who want to invest in international financial service center, in, in our India, the only one IFSC, that is Gift City, it is in Gujarat. So, if any Indian residents want to invest in International Financial Service Center, which is in Gujarat, uh, previously guidelines in a certain manner, and those guidelines now Reserve Bank of India uh, did some modifications. Let's see what actually previous guidelines, and now what are the new guidelines, right? So. By the end of this question, maybe we are in a position to understand if any Indian resident want to invest in gift city that is IFSC International Financial Service Center, what are the previous guidelines and what are the updated guidelines? So we are going to discuss that thing only, right? First, let me explain about the word acronym LRS liberalized remittance scheme right so here uh, you can see this point liberalized remittance scheme introduced as per FEMA act 1999 what is FEMA foreign exchange management act under this act only LRS was introduced what is LRS liberalized remittance scheme what is the purpose of lrs now see <clears throat> before going to discuss next point first let me explain the purpose of lrs if you want to understand the purpose of lrs we need to go to the last before point see here under the lrs see the point under the lrs Authorized dealers were allowed to facilitate remittances by resident individuals up to $2,50,000 per one financial year for any transaction permitted under the law. Right. So, what this point let me explain clearly. As I said already, under FEMA Act, under FEMA Act 1999, LRS was introduced. And what is LRS? Liberalized remittance scheme. Through this LRS, any Indian resident who want to transfer money outside India, abroad, can transfer 
under LRS up to this much value per year, two lakh fifty thousand dollars per year, without taking permission from RBI, without RBI approvals, you, me, or any other individuals, Indian residents, or else any foreign person residing in India, also considered as Indian resident only. Imagine an American guy doing job in India for last one or two years. We can call that guy is the Indian resident. I'm not saying Indian national, Indian resident. Okay. The people who are in India simply, Indian residents, they may be Indians or they may not be Indian residents who want to send money to abroad. That is to that is outside India. Under LRS, under liberalized remittance scheme, in one financial year, maximum the permissible amount as per present guidelines of RBI is two lakh fifty thousand dollars. In terms of Indian rupee, with the present conversion point of view, two lakh fifty thousand dollars multiplied with the eighty almost twenty five into eighty two hundred. It's nearly two crore rupees. That much money. If you are doing a job in India and you want to transfer money to abroad in one financial year, you can transfer under LRS maximum two two lakh fifty thousand dollars. That's the thing uh, with respect to L LRS. Now this LRS. This LRS to this LRS in 2021. In 2021, Reserve Bank of India allowed Indian residents to invest in gift city. Okay, that is IFSC, Indian Financial Service Center, gift city. How and what are the guidelines as of today? And what are the guidelines from today onwards? Let me explain. Already. In our discussion, I hope you people got a clarity. What clarity? LRS through LRS in one financial year, any Indian residents can transfer money to outside India two lakh fifty thousand dollars. Right now, let us assume I am a guy. I am having account with ICICI in Nandyal, Nandyal. Savings account. I want to invest in Gift City. Okay, where where is Gift City? That is IFSC, the only IFSC in India, International Financial Service Center. Where it is? It is in Gujarat. I want to invest there. So it is Gujarat. So it is within India, but the, that area, International Financial Service Center area, will be considered as foreign location for us it means let us assume there is a there is one bank in gift city there is one bank called sba state bank of india if i want to invest here i have to open a bank account with the banks who are having branches in gift city now in our example i taken state bank of india having a branch in gift city if i open an account there that account will be considered as foreign currency account that account will be considered as foreign currency account. I have already account with a ICICI that is called savings account in Nandiala. In my ICICI bank account, I have a money, let us assume 5 crore rupees. Now, this money, out of this certain money, I want to invest in International Financial Service Center, which is in Gujarat, Gujarat state, that is Gandhi Nagar, Ahmedabad. Okay, right. So, what I need to do first, one of the bank branch in Gipti city, I've opened account. I taken in our example, SBA, that is foreign currency account. Now, if I want to transfer money from my bank account, that is ICC savings account to the, my FC account, which is in Gipti city. So, this is just like transferring money outside India. If you want to transfer money outside India, definitely there are certain guidelines, but RBA is saying, through LRS, as I already said, in one financial year, how much money we can transfer? Two lakhs fifty thousand dollars at a free of cost. Right now, regarding this only, RPA changed certain guidelines. Now, let's see the amount is same, no change with respect to that. But in 2021, Reserve Bank of India said if any Indian resident in, in this example may want to invest in Gift City through LRS also they can invest. That's the thing RBA said in 2021. But on that day, RBA 
uh, guidelines there are some restrictions what are the restrictions first thing if i transferred money for the investment purpose let us assume i transferred on 1st april 2023rd money which is in my icc savings account nandyala to fc account sbi branch in gift city one condition is within 15 days that is before 15th of april 2023rd the money that i transferred i have money of 5 crore rupee let us assume I transfer two lakh fifty thousand dollars in terms of Indian rupee two crore to here. I can't transfer more. I can't invest more than that much money through LRS in Gifty City. Okay, that's the limit. I used my maximum limit of two lakh fifty thousand dollars. That is in terms of Indian currency two crores. I transfer two crores to my FC account where with a State Bank of India branch in Gifty City. When I transferred first April two thousand twenty third, before fifteenth April two thousand twenty three. This 2 crore money, I have to invest the companies which are in Gifty City. If I won't invest on 16th of April 2023, it means after 15 days, this 2 crore rupee will be transferred back to my account automatically, immediately. Okay, that's the one limitation. Imagine I transferred on 1st April, maybe I want to invest on 20th of April 2023. But as per RBA restricted guidelines, what is the restricted guideline? Before 15 days, uh, the day that FC account created money, from that day to next 15 days, within that time itself, the amount will be invested in the companies which are in gift city. But maybe I want to invest after 20 days, after one month, in that scenario, it is not possible. Again, I want, I have to transfer. So these are the kind of, this is the one limitation. It means 15 days, if I keep money ideally in my FCA without doing anything, just like kept the money there. I transferred on 1st April and I kept till 15th of April there. Ideally, immediately the money will be transferred to my bank account after six uh, after 15 days. That is 16th day, money will be transferred. Okay, right. Now in recent guidelines of RBA, what it said that 15 15 days restriction was removed. <coughs> that 15 days restriction was removed means there is no restriction now. You can transfer today and you can invest whenever you want. And one more update here. As per previous guidelines, the money in FCA won't generate any interest. Let us assume. First April 23rd I transferred and I, in I invested as per previous guidelines, let me go. If I invested on 14th April 23rd, that is before 15 days itself, I am investing, that's okay. Till 14th of April, I won't get any interest even. I kept my money in my FCA account for a time period of 14 days. For that 14, for that 14 days, SBA is not paying any interest there because the RBA guidelines are like that. So now RBA is saying, FCA account will generate interest also. It means banks has to pay interest even if I keep money here for one day in my FCA account. For that one day also bank has to pay. These are the two updates given by RBI uh, regarding investment in gift cities that is IFSC through LRS scheme. So first let me go with the statements and if you still not understood then I will explain one more time. See, First of all LRS. Is a low rise liberalized remittance scheme. Why it is in news? See, first one the liberalized remittance scheme is a part of the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, which lays down the guidelines for outward remittances from India. As I said already, LR is introduced under FEMA, FEMA Act 1999. And <clears throat> if any residents in India want to transfer money to abroad, LRS will be used. Okay, next thing. In a year, how much money we can transfer through LRS? Two lakh fifty thousand dollars. Remember, in dollars only, not in Indian rupee. Remember, in dollars, two lakh fifty thousand dollars. That's all about LRS. Now, by using that option, any Indian resident want to invest in IFSC, International Financial Service Center. The only one International Financial Service Center in India is, it is Gift City in Gujarat. Now, in two thousand twenty-one, RBA allowed. See here. Resident individuals 
to make remittances under the LRS to IFSC which is set up in India. For what purpose? However, the remittances were to be made only for making investments in IFSC securities. Okay. If you want to invest in IFSC, you can transfer money with the help of a future called LRS uh, to the FC account which is in which is which is opened with the bank branch in gift city. That's the previous thing. Okay. Remittance is only allowed for what purpose? Investment purpose only. Next, next point you can see. Moreover, only non-interest bearing FCA was allowed in IFSC under LRS. That's the previous guidelines I'm saying. These, these all points are previous guidelines. And any funds lying ideally ideal in the account for a period of 15 days from the date of its receipt were to be immediately transferred back to the domestic account of the invest in India. Okay, that's what I explained with the dates also. See, you want to again explanation, just focus here. It is a bank, a customer having savings account, and this account is having 5 crores. And now you want to invest in IFSC, that is International Penal Service Center, where it is Gujarat, Gift City, and he opened State Bank of India. FC, FC foreign currency account. Now, through LRS, he transferred money. Liberalized, liberalized remittance scheme transferred money of $2,50,000. Now, for what purpose? In previous statement, you can understand. For what purpose? It is only for the investment in IFSC securities only. For what purpose? Investment securities. Now, and this one. Non-interest bearing FCA was allowed. This is this FCA, a transferred money to end up like dollars to FC account and to this money, no interest. This is when previous guidelines, these all are, these two are previous guidelines. Now, and one more thing, and any funds lying ideally in the account for a period of 15 days, I transferred on 1st April 2023 and if before 15th April 2023, if this money I kept in this FC account ideally, it will be automatically transferred to again my bank account. Okay. From the see any and any funds lying ideal in the account for a period of up to 15 days from the date of its receipt were to be immediately transferred back to the domestic account of the invest in India. Okay. It means you need to understand from this statement the money that you transferred from that date to within next 15 days itself, you have to invest that money somewhere in IFSC, in Internal Financial Service Center. If, if money kept ideally, it will be transferred back to your own account. That's the guideline till day before yesterday. Now, these are the guidelines only changed by RBI. What guidelines? See, let me explain. Till 2021, I mean, uh, options which introduced by RBA through LRS in 2021, what are the guidelines? Through LRS option, Indian residents can invest in gift city. Only investment purpose, money transferred to here and the money that we are keeping here in FCA account, foreign, this account is nothing but foreign currency account, no interest will be paid. These are the guidelines till day before yesterday. Now to make little bit attractive uh, for the investors, little bit advantage for the investors, RBA uh, modified these guidelines. Let's see what are the modifications, right? Now see, this point by point, this one, this you can focus. Now to make India's International Financial Services Center more attractive, Reserve Bank of India, this one, removed restrictions on individuals from opening interest earning foreign currency accounts. Okay, previously no interest FC accounts, right? Now, from 26 April 2023 onwards, this is not example, this is the exact date I am saying. Uh, that this is the date that RBI modified these guidelines. From this date onwards, if anybody is going to open FC account, and the money that they are keeping in their FC account 
will generate some interest also that's a modification and it, it is an advantage for the investors right see now to make india's international financial services center more attractive reserve bank of india removed restrictions on individuals from opening interest earning foreign currency account it means we can open fca with the interest also right previously no interest now there is an interest for fc account that's the one update you should remember next update further you can see further the central bank removed the condition of repatriating any funds lying ideally repatriating means the money that you kept ideally there that money will be transferred back to your bank account right that's what repatriation funds lying ideally in the fc account for a period of up to 15 days see further the this they removed this this particular restriction also it means previously 15 days ideally if you keep money will be transferred back to your account right now that restriction also removed and that's what it will boost activity at a gift city india's first and only ifsc right so simply i hope you understand uh, what are the changes made by rba two changes one is now fc account will generate interest also for the investors next thing there is no need to bother about keeping money ideally in their account because the 15 days restriction was removed and until the time that you are going to invest that investor is going to invest till that time amount generate interest also that's the one advantage Next. just simply now interest bearing accounts may be possible one may be able to park money in ifsc and will be able to earn some interest on that amount because of the earlier restrictions people were not remitting money to gift city so previous restrictions now the little bit advantages right and uh, the last statement of this topic is you can see that's what i said already under lrs authorized dealers were allowed to facilitate remittances by resident individuals up to in a year how much value two lakh fifty thousand dollars that's all about this question so will you understood or not let me give a review in 2021 reserve bank of india allowed indian residents to invest in international financial center that is gift city in india through lrs but at that time rba uh, kept some restrictions one is through uh, the money which is transferred into the fc account is only for the investment purpose and it won't generate any interest that's the previous guideline now rba removed that one it means now fca will generate interest also next previously if money kept ideally for a time period of 15 days and after 15 days money transferred back to the domestic account of a investor and now that restriction also removed so that and if you transfer today and you are taking time of one month to invest that money in the securities there this one month also the money that you kept ideally for that money interest will be generated that's an advantage for you and uh, these are the changes with respect to this particular lrs uh, investing in gift city through lrs okay next one and uh, that's actually a final question of today's discussion uh, static gk national park already i discussed uh, ms national park in ladakh next uh, dachigam istuar Kajinag, um, City Forest, I can call with other names, Salimali National Park in Jammu and Kashmir. And then I discussed about uh, national parks in West Bengal, six national parks, Sundarbans, Singalila, uh, Niora Valley, Jaldapara, Gormura, Puksa Tiger Reserve, these six in West Bengal. And then I discussed the national parks in uh, Odisha, I think yesterday, Peter Kanika, Simplipal National Park. And today, two more national parks in uh, eastern part of uh, india northeastern state in fact mauling national park and namdapa national parks are located in which indian state so simply the national park names mauling namdapa yes these two national parks are in arunachal pradesh already a few days back i discussed about one of the district changlang in arunachal pradesh won prime minister's innovation award for new age learning center Remember that district name also. And here Arunachal Pradesh again in our discussion. Two national parks in Arunachal Pradesh. One is Mauling National Park. One more is Namdapa National Park. That's all about today's current affairs discussion. Thank you. Take care everybody. Have a lovely evening. Take care.